Australia needing what uh, 76 runs from 72 balls. <laughs> Without this cricket world cup, man. It's yeah. It gets a little bit bonkers sometimes, but that's the excitement of uh, uh, World Cups of any kind and of any sort. It has hashtag MSW Mara Sports Worldwide. Looking forward to a great, great show. Indeed, great man. He's just walked in. I think all of Africa. If you don't know his name, then you're not a football fan. You're not a football lover. In fact, you're not a sports lover. Let me put it that way. We're also going to be live on the YouTube channel, so please go live and catch our conversation because it's not every day that we can get this man, especially with the schedule that he's had in 2023 to come through to a studio, any type of studio. That is head coach of Mamelodi Sundowns, Roland Mgwena, 060-708-0484, 060-708-0484. Any questions or comments? It's a big, big weekend coming up on Sunday at the Loftus Stadium. My goodness, we've never had an AFL final. We've never had AFL ever. I know people keep talking about uh, uh, the big prize money. Hey, 75 million rand if you win, 56 million if you come runners up. Okay, fine. Money is one thing. It's the prestige. And if you watch that We Did Casablanca game and you saw the fans two hours before kickoff packing that stadium, singing the way that they were singing, then you'd understand what a mission Mamelodi Sundowns have in their hands. It is no mean task, man. Whoever wrote off a gentleman called Rulani Mukwena many years ago as a coach or talked about him as a talker and not a doer and a coach. I don't even know what you think right now because you ask Al-Ali. Al-Ali, as a club on the continent, that is one team that we all feared. People spoke about Al-Ali. We would shiver and shake and be like, how many goals are they going to score against any team that is South African? But right now, they hold their own. In fact, his record against Alali is so impeccable. It is crazy. So that's the conversation that we're going to be having. It's going to be the quickest one hour you've ever had. So make the most of it. It is hashtag MSW Marawa Sports Worldwide. All talking about the round of version of the ball because, you know, South Africa these days is winning on every front. Let me tell you, Basketball Africa League, BAL as it's called, has announced that the league's expanded fourth season is going to be tipping off in March 2024 right here in South Africa. That's the good news. So the 2024 BAL season will feature the top 12 club teams from 12 African countries playing a record 48 games across four African countries. That's going to be South Africa, Egypt, Senegal, as well as Rwanda. Over four months marketing the first BL games in South Africa and also the very first time that the league will play in four different countries. And also for the very first time, eh? Listen to this. The 12 teams will be divided into three conferences of four teams each. And the top two teams from each conference and also the top two third place teams from across the three conferences are going to be traveling to Rwanda for four seeding games followed by an eight-game single elimination playoff and finals from May to June. Incredible stuff. Well, well done. Uh, Basketball Africa League. So if you're a basketball fan, it's all going to be happening right here in South Africa. And the big prize is heading off to Rwanda. And guess what? Watching again the We Did Casablanca game. And guess what Sundowns had on their sleeve? Visit Rwanda. I think... At this stage, because there's no visas you know, needed anymore to go to Rwanda. We're all going to be packing that plane, man. We're going to go check out what's happening in Rwanda. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Hi, my name is what? My name is... Uh, Robert Marawa. Matlufutu. Matlufutu means what we call as called as children Futupa. The guys at work gave me your nickname. Oi! And that was the highlight of my day. And for you to have said Matlufutu in that way, I'm sure Ben Richter, you were practicing the entire day. And come the time for delivery, you delivered. Maybe we should take you to India. Hi, my name Matlufutu. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW.
Going to be an exciting one indeed. South Africa safely through. That's all I can say. The host nation, India, also safely through. Not the best of performances as we discussed yesterday, but it's all about the placement. It's all about the semis. So, yeah, good luck, good luck, good luck indeed to the Proteas. Now, this weekend is going to be big on many, many fronts. You talk about the Soweto Derby isn't the only major football action to look forward to this weekend. All roads are going to be leading to Twane on Sunday for the big one, the first ever African Football League final. Sundowns uh, hosting the Moroccan Giants. Widad Casablanca. Now, Widad earned a 2-1 victory over Masandawana in the first leg out in Casablanca this past Sunday. Um, yeah, we saw it. Yeah, own goal, Rivaldo Kutzia. Superb leg strike that came through from Anas Sehat, uh, giving the Moroccan Giants the advantage to take uh, this weekend's second leg decider on. But right sundowns off at your own peril. That's all I can say. After all, I mean, they've been in these situations plenty of times, uh, but they've always shown their class. They've always shown their hunger and determination to advance through and make history. Now, who's going to be walking away with that whopping 70-odd million rands? Eh? Let's catch up with the sundowns coach, Ryan Imgwena, to find out how the preparations are going. Coach. Big Rob. Good to see you, man. Always a pleasure, and thanks for having me. You're traveling. I, I, I don't know how you do it. I, I, I don't know. They're not giving you time to breathe. It's, it's local, it's league, yeah. it's cap, yeah. it's travel. I can see it in your eyes. How are you managing? Uh, first, let me start off by greeting uh, the viewers and um, thank them also for yeah. always tuning in and supporting your radio station. I think well deserved amongst the best, not only just uh, in South Africa, but of course as a sports show, one of the best on the African continent. Uh, Thank you for that, I, sir. I think it is also befitting that I send our sincerest condolences to the Bongin Tuli family. Yeah. Uh, his loved ones, uh, the Amazulu Football Club fraternity, the, the football nation as South Africa as a whole because we've lost mm. a professional football player. And also to, to the bereaved because uh, p some of those happen to be people that I work with and people that uh, shared a change room with him and some of the players. I could see when the news was, um, was uh, let out, uh, I could see how it affected Bongani Zungu, I could see how it affected Tamazwane, Dennis Onyango because these were players that uh, we were were fortunate enough to to share changing rooms so I think it would be inhumane to start off this uh, interview and not abuse or take advantage of this uh, public privilege or platform that has pre been presented to, ex to extend our sincerest condolences to the family uh, from the Sandawana family from the management Mutsipa family the technical team the players and everyone associated we say uh, may his soul rest in peace. Strangely enough, because the show extends. I mean, we, we start off at half past five oh. on, on the different platforms. And I think just as you were making your way through to the studio, uh, we had about a 20-odd a minute conversation uh, with Bongi's father. Oh. Very brave man. Mm. Very strong, spirited, very proud human being about his son and mm. of his son's achievements. And he spoke so glowingly, you know, it, it was almost like accepting what he sees, Ish. describing a son who was very strong, even in the hospital bed that he was in, saying that he had shown no signs of illness. You know, he had the, he says, you know, the biceps were there. There was no sign of anybody that was sick. The, you know, facially, he was great. Mm. He says, and that is what really shocked them is the suddenness of it all because mm. he was there. He was able to communicate and he, he looked physically strong. And the mm. next thing they told that he's not there, he says, he doesn't want to waste his time going for things like autopsies. He says, it's okay. It's always sad, Big Rob. It's yeah. always sad. Uh, death has no measure. Mm. I mean, uh, the, the only way to, to try to find some form of comfort from others is just through expression of condolences and providing as much support um, 
as you possibly can and, and extending your prayers to the family and to ask God to, to strengthen them during this time because none of us mm. can measure the extent of the pain that the parents have to go through in losing uh, an incredible son. Mm. Mm. Someone who I also had the privilege to work with at Sundowns as an, as an assistant coach back then. Uh, came across always as a very humble and respect, uh, respecting human being. And uh, yeah, um, we pray for strength and we pray for guidance. And, and I think that's, that's actually one of the things that maybe death teaches us is mm. that uh, we will never avoid it. If there is one battle that m all of us, nine billion human beings, will lose is is that of life which leads to death and none of us will win that battle the crazy thing coach is is while we talk about this i know that it's it's very morbid mm. um but it's also very necessary mm. is that no greater club and, and we're not doing a count or comparison sure. of, of of death is a club like mamelodi sundowns i mean you've had such a you've, you've had your fair share of, of, of mourning individuals, part of your playing staff, part of your backroom staff, administration staff, just literally in the past couple of years oh. that, have, that have gone. And you have managed somehow to piece it together, not let the standards drop, but to get better as a collective despite losing such prominent individuals within your camp. How have you managed to sail through that? <sighs> And, and and when you spoke about it, and, and before I'm going to try to be very brief because I'd love us to talk football. Yeah, absolutely. But I think the contribution that Bongi made to South African football in a very short space of time and his untimely death uh, makes this discussion necessary because yeah. there are so many takeouts. The first being that you trust in God's wisdom and you 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 have that level of acceptance. The second is in answering your question immediately when we heard the news, I could relate with Coach Mangoba because Coach Mangoba was one of the play coaches that played a huge role in Bongin Tuli's life. Yeah. And uh, it opened uh, wounds that were, that were not completely healed and I don't think will ever heal uh, from a personal perspective when I heard of the late uh, Madisha Mucheka's death because uh, football for me as a coach, even in, in general, it goes beyond the scope of, of it being a game where we have to play 11 versus 11, but it's about fostering good human relations, uh, brotherhood and, and a family type of spirit. And of course you get uh, close to each other because you spend a lot of time together and uh, I could feel Coach Mangoba's pain when he was speaking about it because uh, it just brought back those memories of, 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 of what we as a club went through and what I personally uh, went through when we lost uh, Muchaka Madisha untimely. And um, even with that, we still managed to believe and trust in God's wisdom uh, and timing. And, 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 and that's a a different level of, 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 of maturity and, and, and the ability to live life. But I think a lot of credit needs to go to the football club, the Motsipa family, the, the board, the management, and because we've had even more than just one of these type of uh, occurrences. And uh, yeah, I think a lot of credit needs to go to the club because it's the club that's kept us together, uh, kept the vision alive and, and, and kept the dream going. Coach Rulani Mugwena is my guest uh, tonight. When we come back from the break, we're going to dive straight into football conversations and there's uh, plenty to talk about. I see already an impressive number of your WhatsApp voice notes are coming through. We're also live on the YouTube channel. Uh, so plug in, view, listen, comment on the comments uh, section on that particular platform. Audacious has also sent us a message saying that uh, great that you got the coach there. Exciting match against Weed at Casablanca in the first leg. Notice that he didn't have a recognized center forward in his life. 
lineup, but doesn't he think that it sort of played in Widard's hands? Um, as Utemba Umshishi Zwane played a false nine, good play Umshishi is. I just don't think that he is suitable for that role. And will he, Ushalulile, as well as Ribeiro, be available for the second leg? So, Dacious, all of those questions and a whole lot more. Don't go away. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Yeah. This is 947. Music. Life. Hashtag MSW. Bring out the star in you with Lotto Star's exclusive Real Rush Prevé games. Spin the reels now to turn your ah uh, into woohoo with Mystic Fortune Deluxe Prevé, Golden Unicorn Deluxe Prevé, Hot Hot Fruit Prevé, Tyco Beats Prevé, and many more. You could win payouts of up to 20 million rand on our Real Rush games instantly. Lotto Star, your world of live games. Lotto Star is licensed by the Impumalanga Economic Regulator. No under 18s. National Responsible Gambling Program. 0800-006-008. T's and C's apply. All games are fixed on betting events. Start your engines and crank down the window, South Africa. It's time to pump it up. And win your share of 2 million rand in pick and pay grocery vouchers with BP. This festive, swipe your smart shopper every time you pump it up with 600 rand or more. That's 200 winners, 10,000 rand each in eight weeks. So pump it up at BP all festive for more chances to win. T's and C's apply. BP, every day brighter. Success looks different for all of us. What we do have in common is our eagerness for a brighter tomorrow. A tomorrow where a parent's hope becomes a child's reality. A tomorrow where success is not just owning a degree, it's owning the pathway to the rest of your life. Own tomorrow with Richfield. Study an undergraduate or postgraduate degree online or on campus at Bryanston, Newtown, Centurion or Pretoria. Apply today at richfield.ac.za. Who wants to hear some T's and C's? I don't. But yeah, there are anyway. Pineapple FSP 48650 is underwritten by Old Mutual Insurer, a licensed FSP and non-life insurer. T's and C's apply. I mean, really, what a waste of time. Yes, this is another version of the ridiculously short 30-second pineapple ad. Go to pineapple.co.za for 100% insurance, 0% other stuff. Where once again, thanks to the verbose mandatory T's and C's I just mentioned, we're not going to find out more about... Connect your home to super fast, uncapped internet from Supersonic from just 349 Rand per month. That's all the movies, games, series binges, and downloads you could want. Sign up with Supersonic Fiber from just 349 Rand per month, and we'll throw in a free to use router, free delivery, and free installation. For real, it's from just 349 Rand per month. Check your coverage and sign up today at supersonic.co.za. T's and C's apply. Hmm, there comes that mood again. That shopping hole that only macro can plug. That mood when I get an air fryer because everyone keeps telling me to get an air fryer. That mood when the big game deserves an even bigger TV. A mood to put a backup fridge in my garage over and above the perfectly sufficiently sized one in my kitchen because everyone does this for some reason. If you've ever felt like that, then someone's in a macro mood. Shop macro appliances online or in-store today. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Hi, my name is what? My name is... Uh, Robert Marawa. Matlu Putu. Matlu Putu means what we call as called as children Putu Pup. The guys at work gave me your nickname. And that was the highlight of my day. And for you to have said Matlu Putu in that way, I'm sure, Ben Richter, you were practicing the entire day. And come the time for delivery, you delivered. Maybe we should take you to India. Hi, my name is what? My name is what? Matlu Putu. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Prarop, once again, in my shareholders for MSW, coming to Ukochi Rolane. Uh, let me assure him, Gutsi, we are coming to Pretoria as we speak. Tomorrow, I'm taking a taxi back to Pretoria so I can go and support my coach. We love you, Rulane. We love Mamelodi Sundowns. And we believe in you that you will do this. You will win the cup for us. Remember, these are the guys who beat us when we played a draw in the semi final of the KF Champions League. So we need to pay revenge. Thanks. It's Petros once again, but in, in Block A. 
Hey, Petros and Blockade, hey, thank you so much indeed. Coach Rulani Mugwena is my guest. He's the head coach of Mamelodi Sundowns, about to make history. In fact, they have, because in the final of the AFL, it's going to be staged at the Loftus Stadium in Pretoria on Sunday. Uh, coach, just a quick reaction to that voice note. Reassuring in many ways is about a board a taxi. Head back to Pretoria. Oh, that's great news. I wish uh, there could be many, many more Masandawanas who could do the same and make yeah. maybe even great ex uh, sacrifices to make sure that they support the players. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I think we are in the final mainly because of uh, the 1-0 result at Loftus against al Ahly. Yeah, I think that was a big result, but we would not get that result 100% sure mm -hmm. if that stadium was not that packed. And if for the first time, and really it was for the first time that I felt the support, the energy, the noise at that level, both from behind the bench and in front of the bench. Because normally our most of our support comes from the section that sits across the bench. Yes. But uh, even, even the drum beat and the singing and the noise pushed us through and we were able to to get a very, very good result against a very, very good al Ahli side. And I think uh, a great measure of that is uh, the contribution of, 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 of our supporters. And uh, we want to thank them for, for doing that mm. uh, for the game against al Ahli, but also urge them to, to come in numbers and to give the boys the support. Because I think uh, for a lot of them who were able to watch the game against Widad in Casablanca, you could, yeah. term, you could term that the lion's den. We went there feeling already that uh, we were up against it, extremely up against it. But that environment, that hostility was created by the supporters and I hope that uh, the Yellow Nation can respond to this call and, mm. and, 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 and come in numbers to Loftus on, on Sunday and, and give the boys one of the best performances from them mm. so that they can inspire the players into one of the best performances from them. I want to go back to the conversation you've just had about Al-Ali. I mentioned it in the intro, is that Al-Ali would always bring shivers to any... Sure. Just a mention sure. of the club given the track record and, the, and, and yeah. the history within the continent and the, the Champions League, you go, what, six games now unbeaten yeah. against the Red Devils. Yeah. As, as a coach, young coach in South Africa, I can't say up and come because that'll be a big insult to you. You're an established coach. There's respect for you on the African continent and the world in terms yeah. of what you can do. But to go six without a defeat, for you, what does that, what does that mean? What does it signify to, for Rulani Mkwena? as a head coach of this institution called Sundowns? Well, it's difficult for me and I, and I try not to go into the space a lot because I think as a kid um, growing up, I grew up in a football environment where I would be privileged enough to, to be taken to, to games at Orlando Stadium, I remember at the old FNB Stadium, at the old uh, Johannesburg Stadium, Ellis Park. I went to Rand Stadium. I went to Dobsonville Stadium. I went as a kid to watch uh, those games. Um, even at home, spending time with my dad, at times you would, you would find football players around him speaking about what football is about and, 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 and all the likes. And one of the, the main major things that I learned as, uh, growing up was that uh, football would always remain an old school sport. Part of its roots come from uh, England. And England, we all know how cultural and old school they are. And then, of course, if you think about football in that light, you understand that it is a team sport and that mm, the game belongs to the players. And us as coaches are just there merely to provide support and, and comfort in, in relation not only to the preparation, but also into, into the tactics and the ongoings during the 90 minutes. Uh, and that's a smaller influence, but the game belongs to the players and uh, they've got to take incredible credit for this achievement because uh, of course, without this special group of players and the support that they get from an incredible technical staff, uh, at a at a fantastic football club, of course, that result, those type of results are not possible. You, you make mention of 
the responsibility that is on your hands yeah. and um, you, you get thrown this that is called an AFL project. So everybody is about the Champions League and you guys have done what you've done in the Champions League and there's no take it away. The star is there on the badge. AFL now adds on to an already congested fixture. Yeah. And you were expected to perform and we've seen you perform. We see you travel one day in Luanda, Petro's there and they have given you a hard time before 2020, 2021 as far as the Champions League is concerned. Um, no pushovers. Then you got Alali, now you got Widad. Give me an overall impression of, of what this competition has done as far as the landscape of football and especially Sundowns and especially your work. Sure, that's a, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, and there's a lot of ways to answer that. The first is to to say it is an incredible concept. Um, the leadership of 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 Kev, Dr. Patrice Motsipe, and his his entire team need to take incredible credit for that. Um, when you see the medium to to long term objectives and how that stands to help uplift African football is incredible. And uh, from, a, from a project perspective, I think it's magnificent. From the football perspective, I think when you put together eight of uh, the most prestigious, most successful and probably most deserving in relation to recent achievements and performances, and you put them together to compete for one trophy, of course, uh, the level of performances will be extremely high and that's what I've found. I think we've played some some very difficult games, particularly away from home, where we've had to adapt. We've had to suffer more than we probably are used to, um, particularly without the ball. Uh, you think of the game against Pedro in the first half, and we had to make a couple of changes uh, from a tactical perspective. You think about the game against al Ahly away from home. <laughs> and how we difficult it was to stay and even more difficult to to see them match through after the red card to Mendieta. Mm. And then uh, the last game that we just came out from with uh, with uh, Widad, when you analyze the game last night, you get a feeling that if you don't see the goals and you just watch the game for 90 minutes and omit uh, the penalty and, and, and the two mistakes that we made that led to their two goals, you have an understanding that um, it probably was a game that was more balanced than a lot of people mm -hmm. thought. And statistically, if you look, even though we had slightly more possession and we made uh, slightly more passes and our ex expected goals were slightly higher than the mm -hmm. opposition, it was a very, very difficult game for for for. For, for us and to try to complete that game with uh, 11 versus 11 because we had gone there previously and come back with a 0-0 draw, but it was 10 versus 11 and we had uh, to sit completely with a low block. Mm -hmm. um, so I think what it helps us with as a team is that we grow not only from a from a group dynamics perspective, but because we spend a lot of time together off yeah. the road and... And so the brotherhood becomes uh, stronger, the trust and, and, and the enjoyment of each other's company mm. grows and increases. But I also think from a tactical perspective, the team grows and uh, the performances improve and, and, and they have to improve because of the level of the opposition. Mm. And uh, I think there's been incredible progress from, from, from that space. And even though I have a, a deep feeling still that we can play better, mm. we can do better. And, 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 and this, this tournament, uh, although probably not fair on it uh, because of its own prestige and its yeah. own objectives and its own investment and everything else that it brings along with it from a commercial perspective needs the utmost respect. But... I think it also helps us to prepare for 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 the CAF Champions League that's about to start very soon. Right. I'm just uh, dipping in many different platforms. Yeah, I'm going into the YouTube channel. So plenty of people have logged on. If you are home or you're just um, on the road, you know, tell the passenger there to uh, go on the YouTube channel. But focus on the road. Uh, listen in. Do comment. Lee Shonolo as well says... I'm a Pirates fan, but I'm really happy for you, Coach. Uh, you are one of the best around. It says, keep it up. Um, Ngtha Khaushe says that, Coach Rolani, uh, do you think that subbing off Umo Diba in the Wydad game 
was a tactical mistake from the technical team or do you feel that the change took out a little bit of a sting uh, in the attack? Is that Lithuan or no? That's Umsla. Umsla. Yeah. Fun, funny because um, as coaches, you, you know, it's, it's it's very difficult. But as coaches, there's there's a lot of things. And uh, um, even though we had the game to still play and a couple more minutes to go, uh, and Mudiba's growth and influence in the team from a, from a play perspective and his understanding of the new role that we've asked him to play has been incredible. Yeah. Um, but also I knew that uh, when we spoke on the bench, um, the number of games that he had played, uh, moving all the way back into the Bafana Bafana games, mm -hmm. he played mm -hmm. left back in the Ivory Coast. He then came back and he assisted us in the, the Champions League games. And he's been playing a lot of a lot of minutes in a different role and there was an accumulation of fatigue and 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 maybe even uh, possibly possibly uh, moving into the red zone which could indicate injury and being the coach sure. that i am thinking about where we are at the moment with injuries with injuries, you, with, yeah. the, with injuries. Did it indicate something to you? I mean, it was well. Well, you you could see with the movement, and first first as a coach, you start yeah. to see with the movement because as soon as lactic acid and many other waste products accumulate in the body, mm -hmm. indicating fatigue, the first thing that starts to to give show is the movement, right. you know, proprioception, balance, reaction speed is slightly yeah. exactly, and then the second thing is is decision making where the anticipation, mm. the decisions are not always the right decisions. And then you can already start to see with the movement that there could potentially be something. And then you're already thinking about the next game. And so Mudiba's substitution, even though I think might have compromised the attack in, in Morocco, but allows us to move into a space where we go into the second leg with the Mudiba that is available to play. Unlike when, unfortunately, uh, and injuries happen, uh, even a training session. Yeah. But unfortunately, we lost Lucas Ribeiro in a second leg of a Champions League game where uh, him being a South American insisting to play yeah. and wanting to play so that he maintains rhythm and he, he scores goals and he, the confidence... Sort of maintains. refusing to come out because he wants to play. Yeah, and you know, you, yeah. you, you, you speak to the players and you're like, you, you've, we've got to take you off, you know, this yeah. game. This game is one, but players... Players want to play. And that's one thing sometimes maybe us coaches and supporters and the people who are not on the pitch, we seem to forget very, very quickly. But what, when you talk about injuries, and before we go for the for the break, I wanted to clear that injury list because, it, you know, I tried to scribble a couple of names here, yeah. but Tusi Obas, who had the adductor injury, it was stage two rehab. Yeah. Sipombole, ankle injury, stage three rehab. Yeah. You mentioned Lucas Ribeiro now, knee injury, stage three rehab. Yeah. Um, also Nasir Abubakar as well, quadricep injury, stage three rehab, Pira Shalulila, ankle injury, stage three rehab. I mean, it almost sounds like I'm calling out a ward <laughs> at a hospital here, yeah. but how? Or different uh, load shedding stages. <laughs> yeah, geez, all of them in, in one go, different stages. Any of them going to switch on right now because this load shedding is off as far as these players are concerned. When are we expecting electricity back? Pretty soon, I hope. Pretty soon, I hope uh, they've remained behind, and I've got to give great compliment to the staff that remained behind with them, the medical mm -hmm. staff, the bios, the the doctors that remained behind uh, behind to to assist us uh, in trying to speed up uh, the return to training because mm -hmm. that's the first stage is the return to training, and so. Today I saw a much better Lucas, I saw a much better Obas, I saw a much better Peter Shalulile, I saw a much better Sipombule. Mm. And even though there are no guarantees yet, because we've got quite a few training sessions for the mere fact that they are on stage three, le leading into the stage where they will work with the conditioning coaches to try to to assess and test their level from a conditioning perspective. What is also important is that we try the best that we mm. can to have our best players on the pitch and, 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 and in their best positions. And there was a voice note earlier that spoke about Tembazwane, but if you mm. think about it, you really also have to take your hat off to 
a player like Mshishi because uh, being a former footballer of the year, being the type of player that he is, being uh, probably the master of the number 10 position and then having to be asked at 34 years old to play as a false nine. Shift. Yeah. Uh, speaks a lot about the, not yeah. just a football player but about the person uh, his willingness to sacrifice and, and be at service for the football club and that and that for me is amazing but we will we will see how it goes and hopefully as you say yeah. uh, like we experienced during the Rugby World Cup we, we had no load shedding as a country so we hope that uh, during the final of the AFL Mamelodi Sundowns will have no load shedding mm. going into that match and so Ramakhope is a former leader in Tswane, a former <laughs> captain of that city. He, he's now our Minister of Electricity. I'm sure he has a soft spot for Masandawane, somewhere, somehow, and I'm sure he's listening. Speedy recovery to him because I think he's also looking at his arm. He has a stage three injury, but speedy recovery to speedy him as recovery well. To him. Hashtag MSW live now. on 947 Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live at the same time. Hashtag MSW. All right, we come back from the break and we'll give you more coming through. It is Coach Rulani Mugwena with me right here on Hashtag MSW. Plenty of voice notes. My goodness. Mom, imagine there was a car that could help save the planet. Well, we don't have to imagine. We drive a Haval HEV. They only use half the fuel of a regular car and it charges as you go. Wow. You see, saving the planet is as simple as driving with a Haval HEV. Discover the Haval Jolian and H6 HEVs from under 480,000 Rand, including deal assist. Plus, get a limited seven years or 200,000 kilometer warranty upgrade. Visit dealassist.haval.coza for more. T's and C's apply. Hollywood Bets is ready to take you to the skies with Aviator. Clear for takeoff and your chance to win up to 10 million rand per flight with instant results every 90 seconds and multipliers that keep you on the edge of your seat. Play online now. T's and C's apply. Hollywood Sportsbook is a licensed betting operator. Hollywood Bets supports responsible gambling. No persons under the age of 18 years are permitted to gamble. Winners know when to stop. South African Responsible Gambling Foundation toll-free counseling line 0800 006 008 or WhatsApp help to 076 675 0710. If you want to make real money, you've got to start your own business. The thing is, you need a stable profession. Doctor, lawyer, accountant. You won't get anywhere without a postgrad. Career in tech is the way forward. Going to the family business, it just makes sense. At Investec, we won't tell you how to make your money, but we will help you make the most of it. If you earn over 800,000 Rand per annum, you could qualify to bank with us. We'll even take care of the admin when you switch your account. Now that's private banking. Investec is an authorized financial services and registered credit provider. Make the most of summer with Specsavers' unbeatable sunglass offer. Introducing our exciting buy one, get one summer promotion. Get a free pair of branded single vision sunglasses up to 3,200 Rand. Choose from top brands like Police Eyewear, Hugo and Carolina Herrera. To get your free pair, simply purchase a comprehensive eye examination, frame and prescription lenses. Visit us today or book online. Specsavers for affordable eye care and a whole lot more. T's and C's apply. Enjoy the very best of the season at Food Lovers Market with a 7kg pocket of hearty potatoes for 69 rand, a 7kg pocket of onions for only 49 rand, two 400 gram packs of ground beef for 59.99, and enjoy Jacques Callas Burvos at just 89.99 per kilo. These and many more incredible deals are valid until this Sunday at Food Lovers Market. The best in fresh, guaranteed. Get ready to outshine summer with Virgin Active. Start with the month on us. Add on the freedom to move and gym at over 130 clubs with a premium membership. Score 40% off monthly fees and punch, run, lunge and swim your way to a stronger, happier you, wherever you are. Call 0860 Get Fit or visit your nearest club to get started. It's your time to shine. Virginactive.co.za. T's and C's apply. 
previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. Coach Jerry Shabalala, it was always going to be the long way around, but the tough way around, but a positive start. Sure, so, a very positive start for Rob. Uh... I mean, they're, they're newcomers, JKT, Queens. How do they press or expand you in that 90 minutes? We were not expecting them to be coming at us like that. They showed that they are one of the good sides in, the, in this tournament. What did you attribute the sluggish start to? Trying to acclimatize to the weather at the site. It was very difficult. It's quite hot yet. You would swear that it was during the day, the South African weather. CAF Women's Championship, the league campaign certainly underway. Coach Jerry Shabalala. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Good evening, Rob. And, and the technocrat. Uh, football coaching genius that you're talking to there in studio. Uh, Coach Rulani, please accept my compliments, uh, Rob, because I believe it takes good coaching to improve players. Uh, but I also believe that uh, it takes the highest level of coaching uh, to inherit a good team and transform uh, that good team into a great team. And Coach Rulani has been able to achieve that, uh, looking at the number of records uh, that they've broken under his reigns at Mabilodi Sundowns. Uh, but my question to the coach is with regards to uh, the approach of his counterparts uh, Adil Ramsey over the weekend where we that were overloading the side of Batul are you not concerned coach how many times uh, that uh, Sundowns players were bypassed uh, by the opposition's offensive action uh, in that game which also could have led to the goal that was uh, what it was an own goal and how do you have also have a plan on how you're going to deal with how we that were pushing um, uh, Alande out of uh, the areas that he would normally uh, uh, operate in uh, which we we saw over the weekend he was now starting to collect the balls uh, in the sundowns uh, half uh, which made it uh, difficult for him to get into uh, the offensive area much quicker thank you so much good evening uh, mr marawa and uh, good evening to my favorite coach in the dstv premiership uh, mr marawa i watch uh, mamelo de sundowns against uh, we did on sunday i was very very impressed uh, mr marawa with their uh, display away home uh, away from home i think they put in a great fight against uh, one of the best teams in africa and I have no doubt that uh, in the second leg in Pretoria, if they can do what they did uh, away from home, we can see Mamelo de Sundowns defeating Iwaide in the last game. I wish them all the best, Mr. Marawa. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Rob. It's Hulu Falang here. And good evening to the Mr. W. Shoulders. And good evening to uh, the coach, Ndate uh, Hrulani Mkwena. First and foremost, man, congratulations on an illustrious, um, you know, coaching career that you've had, you know. Uh, but I want to find out, um, how has the team managed to, you know, uh, try and weather the storm that is fixture congestion because you have the inaugural African Football League that you're dealing with at the moment on top of the DSCV Premiership, on top of, you know, other domestic competitions, despite you, you know, falling short in the MTN8, falling short in the first round of the Carling Knockout Cup. How difficult is it to choose a particular squad for whichever games that you choose? Because, I mean, it's no secret that the Sundown squad is a big squad of notes. And yes, you've been hard hit with injuries uh, this uh, so far this season, which makes it even more difficult. So with that in mind and with other circumstances that weigh against Sundowns, especially for this season, how have you managed to weather the storm and continue to, you know, break records and continue to um, get impressive victories. That's what I want to find out from you. Great show as always. Thanks. Uh, Robert, greet you and Rulani with a good heart. Honestly, honestly, I believe. Rulani, I believe in you. Um, I believe in Mama Lodi Sundowns, Ne, I'm getting so excited for Sunday, Ne. At work, I'm the only Sundown supporter. <laughs> there is, they don't like Mama Lodi Sundowns, Ne. And my connection is, Ne. From 1989 to 1997, your sports ground was our recreational club at NCP Kloerkop. I wish you and your team the best. Mooi blij, Ben Rachter. Oh, you gave Rulani a shock, hey? Sure. From 1989? Sure. What do you make of that? It's incredible. There's so much history that you don't know about this f- amazing football club. It's uh, It's been a long journey. You don't get to the pinnacle w- where this football club is without uh, amazing stories to be told. And that was 
was, that was extremely humbling. Ben Richter, thank you so much indeed. Um, I said to Coach that there's so many WhatsApp voice notes, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm mm. going to try. Let's try. Good evening, Robert. As uh, Pro Dylan will always say, the number one uh, sports show in the country. I wanted to ask uh, to Roland Mugwena uh, the difference between playing in Africa. Uh, it can be in uh, CAF Champions League and um, CAF African Football League compared to playing in the DSTV Premiership or here at home. What is the difference? Does he spend more time? in studying the opponents uh, in Africa and then compared to here in, in South Africa. Because I was so humbled when I, I, I saw him detailing, pulling out the paper and uh, giving the details of all the fouls that happened in the game against Alakli. Sta- uh, starting to read this, like, uh, in the 27 minute, a, play, a certain player was supposed to get a yellow card after a tackle. In the 34 minute, a, play, a certain player was supposed to get a, a yellow card. <laughs> I know, man, I can, 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 he can give himself time to uh, study the game. I was so humbled. This is Brian Maguire from Amaguya. Brian Maguire, thank you so much indeed. You know what? We've draped our microphone with the Sundowns jersey. That is part of the, the good luck messages that are coming through. I mean, I watched that press conference. Um, it was intentional. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it had a... And sorry, I'm not, I'm not trying to liken you with anybody. But yeah. it, it had a Rassi Erasmus feel to it in that these are individuals that love the sports that they coach. They go into detail. They go into the per minute per second. I saw you even telling the assistant referee in the Weird Art game yeah. that you can't be offside from a, from goal, a goal kick. kick. Yeah. He even apologized yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah. But if something had gone wrong, those fine margins would have gone against you. Yeah, yeah. So that's all it takes. So maybe and also just condensing the previous question of saying, how do you manage the different competitions? How do you manage to keep the focus? And someone said, Sundowns has got a big squad. Is that a fallacy? Do you have a big squad? Or is that what everybody thinks? <sighs> it's, two, it's two very difficult questions and I'm going to try to answer them because there is one that was very interesting earlier yeah. about the tactics. Yes, uh, that is and, I, and I loved Debo that Ho. question. Yeah, Debo Ho was, that, was, that was an, an amazing, amazing question and great observation. But let me start off by uh, the rules and the regulations. There's, there's, there's interpretation of the rules. Yeah. And I think that has always given referees authority. And it's a pity that as we continue to go, that level of authority as the game develops seems to be diminishing more and more. But of course, because uh, human beings, and, 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 and I speak in the sense that globally and in every uh, sphere of work, mm-hmm. productivity now and efficiency now is, is the most important thing in, in your workspace. And that's the same for referees. But also when you include the human element in there, you are also understanding that it is prone to making mistakes Mm. and to try to mitigate that, which I think has been a very, very, very good uh, thing within football is to introduce VAR. It's got its its pros and its cons, but I think when you watch even yesterday, Chelsea versus Tottenham, um, apart from there being some incidents with Arsenal, apart there being some incidents with uh, Liverpool, mm. you have a clear understanding that uh, if used correctly, uh, VAR could be the vehicle that uh, allows for a Rulani Mokwena to win Formula One. Yeah. Because it could be the first stop and because it works perfectly in La Liga. 100%. And, 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 and when you look sometimes at some of the the calls and the decisions, when I think about some of the decisions that went against us, against Pirates in the final, mm. uh, you you understand why there is that vocalness uh, in relation to the usage of VAR. And I have a complete understanding that uh, from, a, from a monetary perspective and a commercial perspective, there's a, and maybe even more other factors that mm. influence uh, whether or not South Africa is able to introduce VAR, but I think it would go a long way in assisting us in in, in trying to retain the integrity and the respect of the profession mm. of But do you think we're ready, though, Coach? I mean, I'll ask you a straightforward question. We have amateur referees, and, and that's exactly what it is. We don't have fully professional referees. The referees' departments, they say that themselves. Victor Gomes will say that. They, they'll tell you, and it's no disrespect to the guys who are out there. 
the amateur referees because they don't form part of a professional setup. And when you bring something like VAR to then assist without us going professional, are we not jumping the gun? Why not professionalize the referees first and then maybe even start with goal line technology? It's a good point. I, 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 think, I think South African football, in, from an officiating perspective, was caught in a space where we lost far too many very good referees at the same time. Uh, and I think the younger ones coming through could not spend time with enough time with Victor Gomez and and many others who uh, the Daniel Victor Bennett, and, Victor yeah. Longwane, these were incredible, incredible. And even though uh, Jelly is, I think he's one of the best. And uh, I think even though I was a bit disappointed with his previous performance in the final against us, uh, Tom has got incredible potential. Mm. But I think South Africa, uh, from that perspective, never really thought about uh, a succession plan in relation to the referees. And when we lost uh, extremely experienced referees who, by means of age or maybe even having to focus on many other responsibilities, uh, I think a lot of up-and-coming referees were thrown into the deep end. What I do see as the positive before even thinking about VAR is that it does provide South Africa with an opportunity to upskill mm -hmm. uh, its referees and, and therefore try to upskill its level of, 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 of football and the product that it is consumed by, by millions in this country. And I think uh, upskilling the referees would, would, would take us a very, very long way. Let me take a quick question here in Limpopo. Salbi, good evening. Uh, evening, Rob, and evening uh, to Kojurulani. Yeah, your question quickly, please. We're running out of time. Okay, uh, no, I don't have a question. I just wanted to comment, uh, Coach Rulani. I, I, I've watched uh, so many, so many games of Champions League where Sanders was playing, and I've seen uh, much improved Sanders this season. And I wish him all the best on Sunday. Uh, God bless. Nice one. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think I'm getting a lot of that. Even I mean, I can show you. That's that's part of our. <laughs> the YouTube comments that are going on That's right now. It, it is it is it is going crazy. Um I know that you've got a Peter Shadulile problem right now. I don't know if he'll be available for Sunday given what you've observed of him. Mm. Can you give us a yes or no? Will he be available on Sunday? It's too far, Rob, to be yeah. honest. He, he was he was closer to playing in the previous match. The unfortunate situation was that uh, it would need him to travel, to have traveled after we had left Cairo. Okay. And then that would mean that he would only have arrived match day minus one. And then we were not 100% sure already whether he would participate in the game and maybe we needed him arriving match day minus two, sure. then match day minus one. So, so now that we had a bit of a medical checkup today and some good recovery mm. from, for the boys, I saw him, he looks in good space, like many of the others, and hopefully he's ready for, we've got a lot more training. I think we've got uh, three training sessions before the final, so. So it's a possibility. So there is a possibility. Mabena sure. ready to start? Mabena has been, Mabene, Mabena has been on the bench. Yeah. Uh, we've got to be always careful with the younger ones. Sure. Uh, but but you can you can understand the amount of uh, experience that he is getting with ju just only being part of the team. Yeah. Sitting with uh, Marcelo Allende, Temba Zwane, Temba Mokwena in the same flight, uh, spending the same uh, time with them while they are in transit in hotels mm. on the training pitch. I think that's been an incredible, an incredible experience for him. But he's a, he's a, he's a youngster that we have uh, a lot of faith in. And, and someone that we believe uh, God has blessed with many, many more years to to show his his capacity even on a continental stage. I'm not sure if you can answer this question. Marawa uh, and Coach Rolani. A uh, quick one, Marawa. Some of us kids are Chiefs fans who live around Pretoria want to come and support the, the Sandawana team on the final. So not sure because I hear it's a free entrance if uh, we will be allowed to enter the stadium with our kids are Chiefs uh, regalia or is it only for the Sandawana nation. Thanks, Robert. How do you answer that, Coach? Well, I would suppose that um, it would be very difficult to, for yourself, as a human being, I put, I put myself in his shoes. Mm. And I say it would be very difficult for myself to wear an opposition jersey and a rival's jersey 
while trying to give support where it's needed the mm-hmm. most because Mamelodi Sundowns in that particular moment on Sunday will not be representing Mamelodi Sundowns, mm. will be representing South Africa. But he can, wear, he can wear a Chiefs jersey, but also maybe buy a Sundown scarf or a combination or a jacket or something. Maybe if he can uh, afford the scarf, he may as well buy the jersey. Because mm. the scarf is like the tell. It's like being invited to an all-white party and you ask if you can wear purple. Yeah, well, and, and it's up to you because, you know, the reality is we, we, you and I cannot, you, we cannot tell people what to wear. No, of course. We not. live in a democratic society. He's got a choice to pay. He's got a choice whether he wears it and or whether he digs a little bit deeper into his pocket and invests in a jersey yeah. of a team that has been extremely successful on, a com- on the continent. And for sure, we can all agree that it would not be money that has gone down to waste. Unlike in days of VAR, we don't have the 15 or 21 minutes extra time. We're out of time, coach. I hope come Monday we can parade this historic trophy here in studio. I thank you so much. I know how exhausted you are, but you took your time to be accountable to us, but also for us to wish you everything of the best. Good luck. Thank you very much and really wish you everything of the best and thanks very much to you and the listeners for having us on your show. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live In three, two, one. on 947 Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW.